Here's Mon. Welcome. Looking forward... We are looking forward to being able to travel there too, Prime Minister. Well, the federal government is facing increasing pressure to reduce the rising cost of living. As Australians face higher fuel prices and supermarket costs, more households are struggling to balance their finances. Seven News understands that the government could soon make a one-off payment to help manage the rising cost of living. The person behind that budget is, of course, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, and he joins us now. Good morning to you, Treasurer. Let's just start with how much Good morning, are Monique. those cash bonuses is going to be? Well, you could ask me that uh, type of question many different ways, and I'm not going to get on the sticky paper just over a week from the budget about what may be in or, or not in uh, that particular document. What I can say is that we will be taking steps to alleviate those cost of living pressures. Building what we've, on what we've already announced to date, there's been some $30 billion of tax relief, focusing on low and middle income earners since uh, the pandemic hit. Uh, we've also reduced the cost of childcare significantly, more than $2,000 uh, for uh, families with two or more children in childcare. And we've seen electricity prices come down by 8% in just the last two years alone when they doubled under the Labor Party. So we have been taking steps already to alleviate those cost of living pressures, but they are real. And as you alluded to, Monique, with the international situation in Ukraine, we've seen a spike in oil prices, which has flowed through to the Bowser here at home. Yes, OK. Are we getting a cash bonus or not? Yes or no? Even if you won't tell us how much? <laughs> I can't answer th that question about what's in or what's not in the budget, but what I can say is the budget will be our economic plan for a stronger future. It will build on what we've already done to date and it will also address cost of living pressures. OK, you just talked about the cost of living pressures and we've contacted the charity Food Bank who is saying that people are having to make this mm. absolutely heartbreaking decision between buying food or buying fuel. They just simply can't afford to do both of them. They need help mm. right now. What do you say to them? Well, when it comes to uh, fuel prices, we're, we, Australia is a price taker, so it's the international barrel of oil price which does drive the price here at home. But we've already made significant uh, economic support payments uh, throughout this pandemic, uh, which have been very important for low and middle income earners. We've increased the safety net. We doubled it during the pandemic, the, the coronavirus supplement, and then we lifted uh, job seeker, uh, the job seeker rate permanently with the biggest jump in that rate for, for more than two decades. And then we've taken other steps to address cost of living. But again, in the budget, Monique, there'll be further measures which will help reduce those pressures for families because I recognise this is the main topic of discussion around kitchen tables. It is, but you've also said that we have to switch from the big spending, right? You, you can't continue mm. to do that. That's true. So how are you going to afford to help people who are making this decision between food or fuel, especially given the, the price of oil at the moment? Well, what I'll outline in the speech today is how we're transitioning our budget strategy. Obviously, during the pandemic, uh, we had to open the purse strings and programs like JobKeeper, the cash flow boost, uh, that coronavirus supplement, uh, the $750 payments to millions of pensioners, carers, veterans and others on income support helped stabilise the economy and help prevented uh, the high levels of unemployment that we've seen around the world and, in fact, Treasury were initially forecasting at the start of the pandemic. Now that the recovery is very, very strong, and we, yesterday we saw unemployment at 4%, we've ended those emergency payments. But that being said, there's also some temporary targeted responses that we can do, we can make, which can help alleviate the cost of living, and that's what you'll see in the budget in just over a week's time. Okay, you just mentioned the unemployment rate there, down from 4.2 yes. to, to 4. The Reserve Bank has said that it will put more pressure to raise interest rates. Are you worried about that? Well, the first thing to say is this is great news, to see the unemployment rate down to its lowest level in 14 years, to see the female unemployment rate down to the lowest level since 1978, to see the youth unemployment rate at its lowest level 
in a decade. Um, the Labor Party said the single biggest test of the Morrison government's management of the pandemic would be what happens to unemployment and jobs. Uh, and we have seen a dramatic fall in the unemployment rate, which I think is very, very good news. With respect to interest rates, Monique, um, that is a decision for the Reserve Bank, but they have been cautious in their public statements as to when and how they would put potentially move on interest rates. They are at a historically low level today. The market is pricing in increases over time, and that will be a decision for the Independent Reserve Bank Board. All right, you've got a busy week ahead of you, don't you, Treasurer? Thank you so much for your time. We always appreciate it. Josh Frydenberg, thank you. Good to be with you. You sure,